Hello, everyone. My name is Fatih Krakis, and I'm the trainer and training and PD coordinator for All Graduates Interpreting and Translating. Thank you all for taking the time from your very busy schedules to attend our webinar today. I'd like to welcome you all to the first webinar in our aged care webinar series, um, where we have collaborated with the Centre for Cultural Diversity in Aging through conversations, interpreting and translating, as you know, which is our training division, to provide training for interpreters and translators through a series of aged care webinars in 2021. Now, these series, they consist of five parts, and um, in addition to Centre for Cultural Diversity in Aging, and thanks to their link-ups, uh, we have collaborated with some other aged care organisations as well. Um, webinar one will be an introduction to aged care, and then uh, webinar two will be aged care assessment tools and care planning. Webinar three will be understanding dementia. Uh, that will be presented by Dementia Australia. Webinar four will be understanding incontinence, which will be delivered by Continence Foundation of Australia. And finally, uh, webinar five, the last of the series will be about understanding palliative care, which will be presented by Palliative Care Victoria. Now, very lucky today to have two very important people with me here presenting. Um, today's session, Introduction to Aged Care, will be presented by Lisa Tribuzio, who is the manager for Centre for Cultural Diversity and Aging, and she's um, helped me a lot over the last few months uh, putting these series together, so thank you very much, Lisa. As well as Sinisha Kristov, who is an Access and Support Team Leader for the Australian Multicultural Community Services. So I'd like to welcome you both. I will now hand it over to Lisa and Sinisha. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you so much, Fetty, um, and welcome everyone to this um, this uh, webinar about aged care. Um, some of you might have worked in aged care settings, whether it's residential care or nursing homes, residential care, or home care settings where people live in their own home, or in even, even in hospital settings. We're all going to be coming across older people who need language services. So hopefully you're able to learn something today, and please reach out if you have any questions. First, we'd like to start with an acknowledgement of country. So the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of country throughout Australia. We pay our respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, their ancestors and elders, both past, present and emerging, and acknowledge their continuing connection to land, sea and community. We would like to extend that acknowledgement and respect to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander peoples listening to this presentation. We hope our work contributes to fostering respect and recognition between cultures in Australia. So let's talk a little bit about um, aged care services in Australia, how to access those services, and a little bit about my aged care. But firstly, we're going to talk about the rights of the older person. So the term that we use in aged care at the moment is consumer. So when we, talk, when we use the word consumer, we are talking about someone who is an older person that wants support with aged care services. They might be over 65, or they might even be over 50 if they're from Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander backgrounds, or they've faced some kind of trauma. But um, Sanisha is going to, come, going to talk to you about eligibility. Um, but just to let you know that consumer is the word that we're using. So consumers receiving Australian government funded aged care services have the right to be properly looked after, treated well and given high quality services and care. Their rights are protected by the Charter of Aged Care Rights and we encourage you to look at that charter and be familiar with that charter so that you're prepared that when you come across an older person and their family or carers that you are informed about the law and how that they can articulate and express their rights. And they have the right to an interpreter. They have the right to express themselves in their organic language or their mother tongue. Um, the, the Charter provides the same rights to all consumers, regardless of whether the type, uh, the, of, the type of subsidised care and services they receive. And it's translated into a range of languages other than English. So you can actually give a translated version of the rights to your client if you wanted to, but all organisations should be giving it to the client in language. Just a little bit about the Charter of Human Rights, oh, sorry, of Aged Care Rights. Um, so clients or consumers have the right to be engaged in safe and high quality care, be treated with dignity and respect, and have their identity, culture and diversity valued and supported to be living without abuse and neglect, 
and to be informed about their care and services in a way that they understand. To access information um, about themselves, to, be, to access information um, about their own care plans and um, what they've told service providers. Um, to have control over and make choices about their care, um, including their personal and social life. Um, to have control over the decisions that they make in their life around the aged care services, including financial affairs and their own possessions and assets. To have a right to independence, to be listened to and understood. To have the right to an advocate, so if they can't speak for themselves, they can choose someone that they trust and feel comfortable with to speak on their behalf. To, make, to have the right to complain or make complaints to an organisation. The right to privacy and the right to exercise their rights the way that they, that they can. So really important to understand the law around aged care. Another law is the Aged Care Act. So the Aged Care Act is the main law that covers government funded aged care services. It sets out the rules for things like funding, regulation, providers, quality of care and the rights of people, like I just explained. The Aged Care Act states that an aged care provider must facilitate access to aged care services for those who need them, regardless of their race, culture, language, gender, economic circumstances or geographical location. And it encourages diversity and, and, and the respect for someone's story and their identity. So um, again, I encourage you just to have, be familiar with the Act because you might come across a situation where a consumer is not really treated fairly. Um, for example, they might not, um, their culture might not be respected or their understanding of end of life care or dementia care might not be respected. But you know that by law, it needs to be. So it's really important. So just a little bit about diversity um, and inclusion in the aged care sector. So um, just, to, just to let you know that um, there are that the aged care sector is governed or commissioned by the Australian Aged Care Quality Standards. And these standards, again, um, suggest non-discriminatory inclusive frameworks, regardless of people's um, culture, ethnicity, language, gender, religion, spirituality, or sexuality, that they need to be respected. So it's all in the policy framework. So we're not gonna to go too much into it, but just to let you know that the Australian government is very serious about diversity. And again, the aged care diversity framework um, is another framework to be familiar with. I'm not going to go too much into it, but I encourage you to have a look at the action plans to support culturally and linguistically diverse people. Thank you so much, Fetty. And over to Sanisha now to give you a more in-depth understanding of the aged care sector. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Fatty, for that nice introduction. Um, at the Australian Multicultural Community Services, we do support culturally diverse people, diverse seniors in this case. And today I'm here to talk a little bit more about how these people can access services, but also what type of services are available for them in terms of government subsidized services. So at the first slide, you can see the types of care available for seniors who are 65 and over. And we have, the program is divided in two, for services for people with entry level support needs and people with more complex care needs. We'll talk a little bit more about the entry level services and services available for people with more complex care needs. But on top of this, there's also short term and respite care available and also, as you're aware, aged care or popularly known like nursing home or we say residential care. Who is eligible for government funded aged care services? So the most important thing that I would like everyone to remember is that people who are 65 and over are eligible for government subsidized home care or aged care services. People over 50 years for Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islander people and also people who meet the premature aging requirements. There are no restrictions on residency status of people uh, accessing aged care services. Therefore, therefore, people who are temporary visa holders are eligible and can contact um, My Aged Care, which is the main starting point where you uh, access aged care services and also services available. Where to start? It's a very, very critical question. So my aged care is the starting point to access government funded services. You can contact my aged care in two ways. 
One is to contact the government um, MyHK phone line, which is 1-800-200-422, but also MyHK has a website. You can um, send referrals via the website directly to MyHK. Nevertheless, the website is a great resource as well. Contains a lot of useful information in regards to government subsidized HK services. Who can contact my HK? Basically, everyone can contact my HK. So the person requesting the services can independently, if they can, contact the, contact my HK, but also they can be supported by a family member and the call coordinator, but a local GP, a neighbor, a friend, someone that is a support person in general. So as a senior requesting services, you can also nominate a representative for future communication with my HK if they don't feel for any reason feel confident to communicate with my HK. So after the screening, my HK will refer clients for assessment by either the regional assessment services or comprehensive assessment to the aged care assessment services. Let me stop and uh, focus your attention on access and support coordinator. It's a professional role and it's a Victorian program where the access and support coordinators are available to help people who have diverse care needs and are facing barriers in accessing services to access the service system, but also to navigate the service system as well. What happened after like um, a person contacts my HK phone line? So as I said before, a family member, a friend or professional will contact my HK or the client. And uh, if someone else, then the client contacts my HK, they'll have to have the client's consent in order to speak on their behalf. Consent can be gained over the phone with my HK as well. The client's information demographics including my HK number as well should be prepared beforehand so you're ready for that conversation with my HK my HK or Mac I prefer my HK will first register the client and provide a unique AC or HK number to the client the next step will be the my HK screening process so the client or a support person will answer a set of questions related to the client's current situation and well-being. And as a final step, appropriate assessment will be organized by my HK. So my HK communicates by electronic system with the assessment and send this information to the assessment team. Referrals to my HK can be sent online as well. However, the client will be contacted my HK after that referral is sent online. So if you believe that the client will struggle during that telephone conversation with my HK, I always recommend and encourage people and clients to have a representative next to them. So let's summarize the my HK process, which is the first step of my HK services. So you have the registration with my HK, where a unique AC number will be issued to people who are registered the set of questions in regards to their day-to-day -day activities and services that they may need. We call it a screening. And then after the screening, my HK will organize an appropriate assessment. Registration, screening, organizing assessment. What type of assessments are there? Because I'm saying not assessment, but assessment. So we have two types of assessment. The first one is home care assessment with people with uh, low care, um, care needs. So that's done by the regional assessment services in Victoria, usually placed in councils. So that's why it's very often people to use uh, industry jargon and say that we have been contacted or assessed by the council. It's actually the home care assessment done by the regional assessment services that happens in Victoria are based in councils. For people with more complex care needs, we have comprehensive assessment, which is the second type of assessment. That's done by the aged care assessment services that are usually placed in hospitals. So it's going to, uh, in my experience, it's very common for seniors to say, I have been contacted by the hospital. Um, it's actually the comprehensive assessment uh, and the aged care assessment team that they have contacted them because they have a more complex care needs. And 
hence the requirement for um, an, a comprehensive aged care assessment. So um, what is important to remember and how to distinguish these two is that the home assessment done by the regional assessment services, the, uh, these types of assessors can give permission for people if eligible to access services from the entry level or Commonwealth Home Support Program services. And the comprehensive assessment or the aged care assessment services, um, these assessors can give um, approvals for all entry level Commonwealth Home Support Program services as well, but also services under the Aged Care Act which is a home care package for home and community care, as well as residential respite or residential permanent, which is a permanent entry into a residential care facility or simply set a nursing home. So we've touched based on a representative or when a person, like it's very common for um, culturally and linguistically diverse people because of different barriers related to their culture, to their language, and can be many more, uh, may struggle a bit to communicate um, with my aged care, but also go through this aged care journey and have the assessment and eventually the service delivery as well. Hence, people can nominate representatives with my aged care, and then that representative can speak on behalf of that particular person. In regards to the nomination process, you can people can nominate representatives of my HK, but there's also on the H, my HK website nomination of a representative form, so people can fill in that form and send it to the address as stated on the template. This form can be accessed, as I said before, on my HK's website, and you have the hyperlink previously in the first few slides. Support plan review. So it's not unusual for people um, to seek support despite the fact that they already had an assessment. The reason why is because people's situation um, and care needs can change at any time. A simple fall can change the client's situation or the consumer's situation. So we can always organize a support plan review to outline what has changed and how that impacted the care needs of that person. How can we organize a support plan review is the next question. So we can organize it over the phone if uh, we are together with the client or we are a representative, but also service providers who are already involved with the clients can initiate support plan reviews. How does it work? So once a support plan review is organized, that means that that new information that had impact on the client's uh, situation and care needs will go back to the last assessor who did an assessment with this particular person. So the assessor will consider the new care needs and potentially approve additional services who will fully meet the client's care needs. Entry level services or Commonwealth Home Support Program. The abbreviation is CHSP. I try not to use it, hence I'm reading the full name. So entry level services via the Commonwealth Home Support Program. So this government funded program provides a range of entry level HK services for all the people who need assistance to keep living independently at home and in the community for as long as possible. So if someone needs some help with the daily task to continue living at home, people can access services from the Commonwealth Home Support Program. The aim of the whole program is to help all the people, as I said, to live independently in the comfort of their own home as long as possible. The focus here on this particular program is to work together with the people rather than doing things for them which empowers people to be independent and feel valued. So this is all about building on the strengths of the people and also their abilities. A large variety of organizations are funded to provide different range of services. What are services? You'll see in the next slide. So from the government um, funded um, 
Commonwealth Home Support Program, people can access a range of services. And some of those services are outlined in the slide here. So we have domestic assistance or help with household jobs like um, um, cleaning or doing the laundry, personal care, help with bathing, showering, help someone to get dressed, to get in and out of bed as well. Home maintenance is a service available where people can access support with minor general repairs and cares of their house or garden. For example, changing a light bulbs or replacing a tap washer, doing the loans as well. So this all can be available for someone who has this particular need for support to be more independent at home. Home modifications, such as alarms, ramps and support rails, in the aids and equipments, such as bath seats, toilet seats, razor, and so on. Nursing services are also available. So a qualified nurse will assist with managing medications, for example. Social support services are very important service. So you, um, once you start working with um, seniors or people over 65, it's very common in time people to become socially isolated, especially culturally and linguistically diverse people, people living with dementia or other vulnerable groups. Hence, the Commonwealth Home Support Program offers a range of social support services can be a group social support service or individual social support service where people are in a group setup or they are visited by a volunteer if they prefer one-on-one -on -one support to tackle issues like social isolation as well. Transport is another service where people can get help to get um, out and about for maybe shopping, for medical appointments and so on. Meals and food services, are available as well. Allied health services like physiotherapy, podiatry, speech pathology, occupational therapy, advice from a dietitian or other allied health professional services as well. Specialized support services or previously known as the access and support is available as well for people who are facing barriers in accessing services. They can get a help from a professional worker to access and navigate the service system. Other services available like are respite care. So for example, these services are uh, to support the client, but also the carer as well. In order to access support as a carer for someone who is in need of support, these people will need to call 1-800-422-737. This is called the carer gateway. Uh, and it's the access point for carer support services. They have a website as well, similar to my age care, when you can uh, visit the website and read more information in regards to support for carers available. Help with housing or the ACHA program. So there's support and help for people who are homeless or at risk of homelessness. Assessment and referrals for uh, this type of support and advocacy can be done via My Age Care as well, and they'll link you with the correct providers in the person in need of support local area. So let's talk about costs. Very important topic when we talk about um, age care services. The Australian government contributes to the cost of age care services. The person over 65 is expected to contribute if they can afford to do so. So costs vary for different types of care and different service providers. There are no standard costs for aged care services. How much an older person contributes towards the service depends on few factors. The first one is their financial situation. The second one is the number and types of services they do require and eventually receive. The service provider's fees as well. As I said before, fees can vary from one service provider to the other. The Australian government subsidized a range of aged care services to keep clients' fees reasonable and affordable. In older person, if an older person is eligible, they are expected to contribute to the cost of their care. Of course, 
as I said before, if they can afford to do so. They do not need an income assessment, income tested assessment for access of Commonwealth Home Support Program funded services or the entry level funded services, and their age pension will pension will not be affected by their contribution to the cost of their services. So basically, in simple words, the client contributes with a very small fee, let's say, for example, $7 per hour, and then the rest is subsidized by the Australian government. This is how the costs work for the entry level Commonwealth Home Support Program funded services. So the service provider and the client will need to talk and the client will have to, uh, after discussion, agree on any fees that a service provider has before they start any services. Then they can enter a service agreement and the service provider can organize a particular service for them. For example, from the list above, domestic assistance. Service providers should have a fee policy and arrangements for people who are unable to pay their fees due to experiencing financial hardships as well. So clients are encouraged to have this, this discussion directly with the service provider that they have selected to provide a particular service. Home care package, it's a service that is available for more complex um, or coordinated care or where more complex and coordinated care is needed. So we, up until this moment, we, we talked about Commonwealth Home Support Program funded services, services approved by the regional assessment services or assessors, and they work on the fee-for-service principle. This is support for people with low care needs. Now we're going into the more complex care needs clients and services that are available for them. And the home care package, it's one service that is available for people with more complex care needs. In order for a home care package to be approved, people will need to have a comprehensive aged care assessment completed by the aged care assessment services. Under a home care package, clients have access to coordinated package of services tailored to meet the older person's specific care needs. The packages go from level one to level four, depending on the client's care needs. So level one supports people with basic care needs. Level two supports people with low level care needs. Level three supports people with intermediate care needs. And level four, which is the maximum higher level of a package, supports people with high level care needs. Individuals approved for home care package are placed on a national queue until a package becomes available or assigned to them. When care commences, all approved providers must deliver home care package services under a consumer directed care basis where the consumer is in the focus. Let me simplify to you what a home care package is. It's a certain amount of money in simple words or a budget where a provider will work together with the client to create a care plan, add services that the client needs and organize it from one place where from the Commonwealth Home Support Program, um, so services can be accessed from different providers if the client have the need for more services. Here, everything is centralized in the package provided by one provider and people can access support for a range of services via this way. So we said that even though approved, people will have to go on, an, on the national queue for the, their home care package to be assigned. The national package queue, which determines the order in which eligible consumers are assigned a home care package, it's very difficult sometimes for the culturally and linguistically diverse people to understand the difference between approved and assigned. Uh, and this is where interpreters come in place as well for cultural and linguistically diverse people or people who um, need interpreter to communicate with assessment services and my age care. 
So it's very critical to explain that when people have assessment, they may be approved for a home care package, but then they may need to go up, uh, then, sorry, then they need to go to the national queue and wait for the package to be assigned. Once the package is assigned, that means that people can start their package and start using services um, from the package as well and select a preferred provider for the home care package as well. So in regards to the package release process, which determines the number and the type of packages that can be assigned to clients on the queue at a point of time, there is a home care approval, Consumers are prioritized with low, medium, and high care needs. The package release process is when the package is assigned. So people will receive a letter from my aged care three months before a package is assigned to prepare and start looking for a provider. And they will be given a certain time frame to enter into a home care agreement with a home care package provider. Sometimes even people are for level three um, home care package they may access in some cases level two interim home care package and then when the level three becomes available the level two is stopped up to the point where it reaches level three so more support services can be organized by the person's preferred service provider services that people can access under a home care package very similar to the commonwealth home support program but now the services are provided from one central place which is the home care package and some of the services available to people but not limited to can include personal care services nutrition hydration meal preparation and um, um, dietitian or allied health services continence management mobility um, support and services, nursing services and other, as I said, professional allied health or clinical services, management of, let's say, skin um, integrity that can go under, under nursing as well, telehealth services, accessing assistive technology, aids and equipment, and so on and so on. So home care package, to summarize, level one and two are not intended to provide comprehensive clinical or health services. This is why we have different levels and level three and level four packages have a greater emphasis on delivering complex care for clients and clinical services like nursing, for example. Of course, Home care packages um, have restrictions as well. It cannot, everything cannot be organized from a home care package. And some of those restrictions include items that would normally be purchased out of a general income, buying food, except for like meal services to the client as well. But package cannot be used for regular grocery shopping as well. Payment for permanent accommodation, including business with home um, purchase, mortgage repayments or rent as well. Payment of home care fees. Payment of fees or charges for other types of care funded or jointly funded by the Australian government. Home modifications or assets that are not related to the person's care needs as well. Travel and accommodation for holidays. So we. Um, usually um, when we try to say a joke, we say to the clients, well, you can't go overseas using your, your home care package. Funding, of course. Cost for entertainment or similar entertainment, uh, uh, similar activities to entertainment, like memberships for different clubs and tickets to um, sporting events, for example, gambling activities, payments for services and items covered by Medicare um, benefit scheme or the PBS or the pharmaceutical benefit scheme as well. Thank you so much, Sunisha, for that overview. Um, <clears throat> and as you can see, it's a very, very complex system, um, but it is something that can be understood um, given the right reading and the right conversations with um, people to understand the consumer journey. 
So um, you don't need to know everything right now because it is we are still we are still learning about the aged care system because it also is changing. And if you understand or and, and be aware of, for example, the effect of COVID-19 on the aged care system in Australia, um, there have been changes around rules and policies around that as well. Um, so don't put too much pressure on yourself. This is just a, a, an introduction. And um, I think Sunisha has done an excellent, excellent job. So thank you, Sunisha. Um, so my role now for the next 10 minutes is to give you an understanding of where to go for information in different languages about aged care um, and around how to access aged care translations and multilingual information. Now, I'll give you a bit of an overview of the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing because we do have multilingual information um, about aged care. Um, our vision is um, that all aged care consumers experience inclusive and accessible care in Australia. And our purpose is to work with aged care providers around delivering services that are inclusive and welcoming. And we also um, talk about how older people from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds or older people who need language support um, or have English um, from a non-English speaking background background. Sorry, uh, Fetty, just if you can go back. Yep. Um, they might um, need to know how to, how to access the system. So we work with the aged care providers and sometimes we work with um, interpreters like we're doing now to understand how to help the consumer. The Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing is funded by the Australian Government Department of Health and we are part of the PCAC Alliance, the Partners in Culturally Appropriate Care Alliance and Program. Um, and that program is in each state and territory, and we are the Victorian provider. So if you go onto the PCAC Alliance website, which is pcacalliance.org, you'll see all the different activities that they do to help culturally diverse older people and their families and advocates to access the aged care system. Now, um, this slide is a little bit of a screenshot around our website. So the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing has a website. If you go onto the website, you go onto the tab service providers, multilingual health and aged care information, is where you can find where we get a lot of multilingual um, resources and we put it into that one site. So you can start to have a look at what are the topics in aged care and, and how you can maybe help your consumer to read um, things like um, My Aged Care, which is Sunisha's just explained. Um, My Aged Care is translated in many different languages. Um, costs and fees explained in different languages. Things like um, the Aged Care Act in different languages. The Charter of Rights. Yeah, things like, um, so if you, here we've got My Aged Care. Apologies that this is a little bit small. We tried to fit everything into the one slide. But if you look at My Aged Care, um, the Australian Government um, Department of Health have translated what Sunisha pretty much has just said in many, many different languages, um, including Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander languages. Um, the Aged Care Quality and Safety Commission, which you spoke about before, so if someone wants to make a complaint, if someone's been abused or neglected or um, they feel unsafe, um, they can get access to the Aged Care Quality and Safety Commission information and make a complaint. And the reason why I want to emphasise this is because there's been a very low rate of complaints and feedback from culturally and linguistically diverse consumers. Um, and I wonder why that is. Do people feel afraid to complain? Um, do people um, feel confused as to how to complain? But I think it's really important for them to know how to give feedback to the government. Um, there's other topics like advanced care planning, um, and that's translated into different languages. So advanced care planning is how to pretty much work with the consumer to prepare for their end of life care. Um, it's a very sensitive topic for some communities. I mean, for all of us, death and dying is a, a very uh, sensitive topic, but it is what is very um, prevalent within the aged care system. And the advanced care planning and palliative care, which uh, Feti mentioned before, that palliative care will be speaking in another webinar, is really important because if you think about death and dying, you know, people have religious views, spiritual views, um, they have their own ideologies as to what they think about 
um, death and dying and it's really important to understand and respect their worldview and that's what advanced care planning does as well. Um, things like arthritis, for example, or bowel health is translated in different languages. Um, mental health is massive at the moment, is really big a topic at the moment, given social isolation and depression during COVID for older people. And also depression can be linked to dementia. People that have been diagnosed with dementia can be at risk of, um, de of depression. So it's good to understand what mental health resources are out there. Thank you, Petit. Next slide. Uh, thank you very um, much. I just want to point out as well that the slides are available to download on the GoToWebinar app. So we have the presentation slides there, as well as the Ozit Code of Ethics, as usual, that um, our practitioners and attendees can download. Thank you, Lisa. Sorry about that. That's a great point. Thank you. Um, so just a bit of a summary of what we offer at the Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing. So we've got communication cards and aged care signage in 57 languages, which means that aged care signage can be placed in residential care facilities for people that need language support. Um, so if you look at our website under communication cards, you'll be able to see all the languages, including new and emerging languages. We've got consumer feedback forms in 12 languages and interpreter cards in 32 languages. But the interpreter cards are the Victorian government interpreter cards that we've made available on our website. They're little cards that people can put in their wallet um, that any time they go to a service, they simply hand the card over to that service and they need to give them an interpreter if, if available. Um, so just some further reading um, for you. So um, in, if you wanted to know more about the aged care sector and to start your journey or to continue your journey on building your knowledge, um, and it never really, it never ends. So <laughs> um, the Australian uh, Multicultural Community Services website is a great website to um, get your head around some of the services that Sanisha's organisation offers. Of course, our Centre for Cultural Diversity and Ageing website is a national website where up-to-date resources are loaded um, uploaded onto that website regularly. Um, and then we encourage you to have a look at My Age Care. Um, there's the first one, which is a little bit about My Age Care, and the second one is about My Age Care and how it's um, been made accessible for people who have language support needs or disability or are homeless or have um, financial disadvantage, and it's called Accessible for All. Um, translation and interpreting services for aged care providers. So just have a, a if you wanted to have a look at how aged care has um, engaged um, translation interpreting services and they use TIS, um, translation interpreting services for their main accounts. Um, so it's good for you to be aware of that. And of course, the Partners in Culturally Appropriate Care Program, the PCAC Alliance, to which we are part of and which the government is very um, generous to be able to give us financial support to, 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 to do the work that we do and to promote human rights and equality. Um, because we know that there's also um, differences in the way people engage with aged care services. People need additional, some people need additional supports. Um, we also need to point out that in terms of aged care and my aged care um, packages, getting an aged care package, there in uh, an article last year in September 2020, there was 100,000 people waiting on the, on the waiting list for a package. So you need to understand that the system doesn't always, it's not always perfect. Um, we've got the Royal Commission that's just come out with people, um, uh, with 39% of people experiencing neglect and abuse in residential care. Um, of course, the underutilisation of um, interpreting services in aged care. There are lots of issues in aged care. And like I just mentioned, the waiting list. People have waited years to actually get a home care package. So it's not going to always be perfect, just to let you know that. Um, but yeah, we encourage you to just keep reading, like maybe look at some, even in the newspaper, there's always things happening in the media about aged care. Um, given just what's happened with COVID, with things like visitor rights in residential settings, so people visiting people in residential settings, and of course people dying in residential care um, settings because of COVID. So it is, um, which the government's trying the best they can, but there's lots of challenges as well. <music>